Okay, so welcome to part six of acid-base disorders. And this is where it all sort of comes together at this point where we're looking at the questions. And uh, we're going to go through a specific order. And hopefully if we stick to that order, we'll be able to figure out any acid-base question they'll throw at us. Remember, the form that we're going to follow is for the ABG. Okay, we're going to have the pH first. Okay, then the PCO2 second, followed by the PO2, and then the bicarb uh, last there. And uh, for the Chem7, uh, remember we're always going to have uh, this sort of a, a pattern. We'll see that over and over again with the sodium, potassium, chloride, and the HCO3 minus. We're not really going to be talking about the blood urea nitrogen, the creatinine, or the glucose, so we'll just focus on these areas right there. Okay, so let's clear the screen and uh, let's go ahead with our uh, first question. So pretend that someone gives you a blood gas and the pH is 7.47 slash 29 slash 94 okay and the bicarb in this case is 22 we can also pick that on the chem 7 let's go ahead and give you the chem 7 and the chem 7 is 7.47 140 and the potassium is 4.0 the uh, chloride is 106, and again, as we mentioned, the bicarb is 22. So what's the very first step that you need to do? The very first step that you need to do is, number one, calculate the anion gap. This is always going to be the first step. The reason why this is the first step is because, remember, if you have an anion gap, then you always have an anion gap metabolic acidosis. So that'll tell you first off. So what is the anion gap? It's going to be 140 minus the addition of these two. So 106 plus 22 is 128. So 140 minus 128 is equal to 12. Now, we're going to assume here for all of these answers that everybody has a normal albumin. Remember that you could calculate what someone's albumin uh, anion gap should be based on their albumin simply by multiplying their albumin times 3. Uh, normal albumin is 4, so 3 times 4 is 12, and so we'll always assume that the normal anion gap should be equal to 12. So the patient has an anion gap of 12, therefore the delta gap, which is the second thing that we calculate, or the next thing, uh, the delta gap is simply the anion gap, which is 12, minus 12 always, okay? So we always take 12 away from the anion gap and our delta gap is zero. That means that there is no anion gap metabolic acidosis is occurring, none. And that's very important, okay? All right, so next, next step is number two, okay? Um, with number two, we look to the second rule which is, look at the pH and the PCO2. And if they're going in the same direction, it's a metabolic process. And if they're going in different directions, it's a respiratory process. Here, the pH is going up from 7.40. And here, the PCO2 is going down from a PCO2 of 40. They're going in different directions. Therefore, we know this must be a respiratory problem. And is it a respiratory alkalosis or respiratory acidosis? Well, it must be a respiratory alkalosis because the pH is greater than 7.45 or it's higher than 7.40. So it's a respiratory alkalosis. Now, there's two types of respiratory alkalosis. There's a chronic and there's an acute, okay? Chronic and acute. So the question is, which one of these two are we dealing with? 
For that, we need to use Winter's formula. Remember, if you look back at our previous lectures, in a chronic respiratory alkalosis, in a chronic respiratory alkalosis, the bicarbonate will drop HCO3 one unit for every two units that the PCO2 drops. Okay? In an acute respiratory alkalosis, remember that for every drop that the PCO2 does, uh, or specifically for every five units that the PCO2 drops, the bicarb is only going to drop by one point. And why is that? Because this is an acute respiratory alkalosis. So it's going to drop more before the bicarb kicks in because it's acute. The kidney doesn't have a chance to kick in. Whereas in a chronic state, the PCO2 is going to drop by less before the PCO2 goes down. So let's look and see in terms of bicarb and PCO2 where we are. You'll see here that the PCO2 went from 40 down to 29. Now that is a drop of about 11. So the PCO2 actually dropped by 11 points. How much did the bicarb drop by? Normal is 24, so it dropped by about 2 points. So which one of these ratios does this fit better? Does it fit better under the chronic, or does it fit better under the acute? You can see that it fits better under the acute because it follows that ratio more carefully. Uh, a 2 over 11 is very similar to 1 over 5. Therefore, the answer is that this is an acute respiratory alkalosis. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Uh, suppose we have a pH of 7.42 29.94 and a bicarb of 19 and we have a chem 7 here which is 140 over 4.0 110 over 19 let's go ahead and do it our first step, which is to calculate the anion gap. Okay, So remember, we're going to add up these two numbers here, which is the chloride and the bicarbonate, which in this case is 129, and subtract it from 140. So we get an anion gap of 11, which is about 12, which is normal. So our delta gap is... actually negative one in this case, which is close to zero. So there's no anion gap metabolic acidosis. Number two, we look at the pH and the PCO2. And remember, if they're going in the same direction, it's metabolic. If they're going in different directions, it's respiratory. Here, the pH is going up from 7.40. The PCO2 is going down. If they're going in opposite directions, it must be respiratory. And in this case, it must be a respiratory alkalosis since the pH is alkalemic slightly. So it's a respiratory alkalosis. Again, is it an acute or is it chronic respiratory alkalosis? And for that, we need to look at Winter's formulas once again. Remember, in, in the, alkal, in the uh, respiratory alkalosis acute, for every drop in the PCO2 of 5, there was a drop in the bicarb 
of 1. And then for chronic, the ratio was for every 2 that dropped in the PCO2, the bicarb dropped 1. Okay, so let's take a look here and see. How much did our bicarb drop? Our bicarb dropped by about 5 points. It went from normal of 24 down to 19. So our ratio is a 5 on the top that it dropped. How much did our PCO2 drop? Well, it dropped by about 11 points because it went from about a 40, which is normal, down to a 29. So that's our ratio. Now, which one does that most look like? Does it look like the acute or does it look like the chronic? And you can see here that that looks more like the chronic. And so this is a chronic respiratory alkalosis. Let's go on to the next question. pH of 7.26 60, 55, and a bicarb of 26. Again, let's do our little Chem 7. Sodium here, 140. Potassium, 4.0. Chloride is 110. I'm sorry, let's do, let's make it uh, 104. And the bicarb is again 26. What's our first step that we need to do? You've got it. Got to calculate the anion gap. Anion gap here, 104 plus 126 is 130. And 130 minus 140 is 10. So the anion gap is equal to 10, which again is essentially normal. There's no increased anion gap. Delta gap, if you want to calculate it, would be around negative 2. Anyway, for the most part, there is no anion gap metabolic acidosis. So we go on to number two, and that's when we look at the pH and the PCO2. Here, the pH is definitely going down, and here, the pH or the PCO2 is definitely going up. Again, we've got opposite problems, opposite directions, and so what we have here is a respiratory acidosis. No question about that. But you'll remember there's two types of respiratory acidosis. There's an acute respiratory acidosis and a chronic respiratory acidosis. And you'll recall in the acute respiratory acidosis, for every increase in the PCO2 by 10, the bicarb goes up by one. And in the chronic respiratory acidosis, for every increase in the PCO2 that goes up by three, the bicarb goes up by one. Why is that again? Because in the acute, remember the kidney doesn't have a chance to compensate, so you're gonna have a much higher rise in CO2 before the kidney kicks in than you will in the chronic. So let's put that to the test here with our specific question. How much did the bicarb go up by? Well, we see here normal is 24. It went up by two points. So we'll put a two there. And how much did our PCO2 go up? Well, it went up by about 20 because normal is 40. So the question is, what ratio does this most look like? And you can see two over 20 is most like one over 10. Therefore, this must be an acute respiratory acidosis. Okay, let's go through it again. Let's do another question. Uh, here we have a pH as equal to 7.34, 60, 55, and a bicarb of 30. Got a chem 7 going on here, and the sodium is 140. The uh, bike, uh, sorry, the potassium is 4.0. The chloride is 100, and as we mentioned, the bicarb is 30. Okay, so what's our first step again? Calculate the anion gap, of course. 
Here we have 100 plus 30, which is 130, minus one from 140 is 10. So the delta gap is negative two. Essentially, we have no anion gap metabolic acidosis. We go on to number two, the pH and the PCO2. Here, pH definitely going down, PCO2 definitely going up. Okay, so again, it must be a respiratory component and it must be an acidosis. But again, the question is, is it an acute or is it a chronic? And let's review those again. Remember, for acute and for chronic, for acute respiratory acidosis, the ratio is 1 over 10. And for a chronic respiratory acidosis, it's 1 over 3. And we're simply talking about the increase in HCO3 minus over the increase in PCO2, increase in HCO3 minus over the increase in PCO2. So let's do our ratio here again. How much did the bicarb go up by? Bicarb is 30 from 24. That would be an increase of 6. And how much did our PCO2 go up by? It went up by 20 because 40 is normal and it's 60. So that would be 20. So which one does this look most like? Does this ratio here look more like this or like this? And you can see it looks more like the one over three. Therefore, this is a chronic respiratory acidosis. Good, well, join me for part seven for more questions.